The name of this video is Blender 2.62 Text Effects. There are many reasons to add text to a Blender scene, whether it's for creating a title, adding opening or closing credits, creating speech bubbles, adding a watermark, and so on. My goal for this video is to get you comfortable with adding text to your scene. Blender text objects are special curve objects. You'll most likely need a bit of practice before you become comfortable with Blender text objects. The purpose of this video is to give you a basis for practicing. So let's get started. Delete the default cube. The easiest way to work with text is top orthographic view. By default, text is a two-dimensional curve object aligned to the XY plane. There's no third dimension. In top view, you're looking down from the Z direction onto the XY plane, so the text is facing you. X is left and right, and Y is up and down. Press num7 for top view and num5 for orthographic view. Orthographic view is easiest because you'll get an accurate representation of the font and the letters not affected by any perspective. After you've edited the text the way you want, you can reorient the text to a different view and add perspective. Press Shift A and select text to add a text object to the scene. Tab into edit mode. Text is a strange beast, not a mesh object, technically a curve. However, editing text doesn't work like editing a mesh or a curve. We don't have edges, faces, or vertices, as in the case of a mesh. Nor do we have control points, as with curves. And forget the hotkeys, as we'll see in a second. Editing text actually adds letters to the text object. If you think you're going to edit a text object as if you were editing a mesh or a curve, you'll end up with weird results. Usually in Blender, the editing keys work consistently, no matter what type of editing you're doing. Text is an exception. For example, if you press the A key, thinking you're going to unselect everything, you're actually going to add the letter A to the text. Similarly, pressing the G key, the R key, or the S key adds the letters G, R, and S to the text object, instead of moving, rotating, or scaling the object's geometry. If you do want to grab, rotate, or scale text, you'll need to be in object mode. You'll be affecting the entire object. To demonstrate this, I'll go into object mode. The tab key still works the same way you're used to. Press the G key to move the text object, and left click to confirm. Now, I'll press the tab key again to return to edit mode. We're sort of in word processing mode although it's not exactly how a word processor such as Microsoft Word works. Some things do work the way you're used to, others don't. By default, the word text is added to the text object. A rectangular cursor bar displays at the end of the T. To add the text, just start typing. Let's delete the text and add the text a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. To delete text, press the backspace key. After no text display, start typing. The right and left arrow keys control the position of the cursor. Holding the shift key and pressing the arrow key allows letters to be selected. Holding the control key and pressing right arrow selects the next word, while holding the control key and pressing left arrow selects the previous word. You can replace selected text by simply typing, just as in a word processor. The Home key in Edit Mode positions the cursor at the beginning of the text, while the End key places the cursor at the end of the text. A big difference between Blender text and Word Processor text is that in Blender, the text does not word wrap by default. In a Word Processor, there's a preset line width, and the text will word wrap once its length exceeds the width. In Blender, the default width is zero, which means the text will stay on one line. As you can see, the entire text does not display in 3D view. To change this behavior, making the text word wrap, click on the object data icon, the fancy letter F. Scroll down to the text boxes panel and change the width. Let's change the width to 10 Blender units. Now, as I type, the text word wraps when its width exceeds its line length. The text size can be adjusted by changing the size controller. The shear can be changed by the shear controller. Let's look at the paragraph settings. 
Justify, left, right, center, and flush are allowed, with alignment relative to the line width. Left alignment is the default. The little dot, the object origin, means something different with a text object than it does for a mesh or a curve object. With a mesh or a curve, the object origin by default is the center of the object's geometry. With text, it's the center point for the actual text. Text can also be adjusted in Blender units by the character spacing, word spacing, and line spacing controllers. The offset adjusts the text along its X or Y axis. That's why it's useful to edit text in top view where the X and Y axes are directly below. Paragraph management is handled in units called text boxes. Think of each text box as a separate paragraph. The width and height of the new text box is the same as the previous text box. Adjust the X offset by the amount of the width. Adjust the Y offset to control the box location up and down. Let's make the text two columns side by side. To do that, add a text box. The settings for the new text box are copied from the previous text box. Change the X offset of the original text box to negative 10 from 0, shifting the text box to the left 10 blender units. Now I'll type some text so that it overflows into the second text box. Voila! Two column text. You can do a similar technique to create a paragraph below by changing the Y offset. I'll change the Y offset from the first text box to negative 10 so you can watch what happens. The object data icon changes depending on the object. For text, it's a fancy letter F to indicate a fancy font, I think, that displays the text the object controls. We can change the fonts to pretty much any font installed on your computer, but works best if it's true type or postscript type 1. By default, Blender uses the default font called bfont, which is internal to Blender. If you click on the folder icon to the right of the font name, you can change the font, which applies to the entire text, not just to selected text, by going to the font directory of your computer. By the way, the font panel is accessible either in object mode or in edit mode, which implies that the font affects the entire text object, not just the part of it. On my Windows machine, the font directory is at C, Windows, Fonts. Instead of having to navigate each time you want to change a font, you can set it in the User Preferences screen. I'll change it, show you the file path of C, Windows, Font. If you press Control U, you can make the setting permanent, as I did before recording this video. You can navigate to the font you want. I'm changing back to the 3D view. Just for fun, I'll change it to Wingdings. Blender can incorporate most TrueType and PostScript Type 1 fonts. I'll select some text by holding the Shift key down and pressing the left or right arrows. I'll change the fonts to Wingding. Note that the font for the entire text object not just the selected text is affected. The Browse ID data drop-down has any font that's been added to the scene. You can restore the font to B font by selecting it from the drop-down. Now the text is back in its default font. Go to the tool shelf, not by pressing the T key, which would add the letter T to the text, but instead by selecting View Tool Shelf from the Windows menu. Text can be copied and pasted. Paste file lets you paste text from an external file. The contents of the file is appended to the text at the cursor location. Bold and italic can be added, but you need a font that supports it. There are also settings for underline, underline thickness, and underline position. The text is a flat, two-dimensional curve object. In mesh modeling, we typically extrude some geometry to get the third dimension. This is also necessary to get the third dimension for text, except that if you press the E key, attempting to extrude text, you'll add the letter E instead. With text, as with curve objects in general, there's an extrusion setting. You don't need much to get some depth. You can set the text depth to 0.1, but that makes the text kind of fat. An initial setting of 0.05 is enough, though you might want more for some special effects. The text is extruded along the z-axis. In the bevel control, you can bevel the edges of the letters. You don't need much. A setting of 0.03 makes a nice edge. The resolution would make this text smoother and act something like subdivision surface. 
There are many other things you can do with text, which I'll get into more detail in another video. I hope this tutorial gives you some idea of how to work with text in Blender. This is just the start. Feel free to experiment to get your own neat text effects. Happy Blendering!